Okay, my friend, here's my friends, here's a quick video how to split up um, tables. And that was a question basically asked by Rochette Al Namani under one of my previous videos. So let me quickly show you. Hello, Phil, could you please let me know how can I split a data set to multiple tables? Example, I have a data set having 10,000 rows and I want every thousand row to be allocated to a table. At the end, I will have 10 tables with 1000 rows each. Thanks in advance. So let me quickly show you how I approached it. Short disclaimer, I approached it my way. There may be easier or better ways, but let me just quickly show you. So at the beginning, we have basically a table here, and I'm reading this from the local workflow area, just an example table, right? With procurement data, 10,000 rows, as you can see here. So we import that, and immediately afterwards, we start chunk loop start. And the chunk loop start, you can set to basically how many rows per chunk, which is probably exactly what you want, Rashid. Um, so in this regard, we take a thousand rows and we split it and then we write it to another nine table. You could also, of course, use here and here, Excel readers, Excel writers, whatever your preferred data um, fi or file type is. One thing I wanted to make sure here is, um, or, or maybe two notes, first of all, the table writer itself has no output node, so basically, usually the workflow would end here. However, we can utilize a little trick because whenever this one is done, it sends basically a ping through the flow variable port. So I right clicked on the table writer set, show flow variable ports. In this regard, it says hide, but we can also show the flow variable ports. And I basically connected the flow variable port of the table writer out to the loop end so we can end our loop otherwise we would not jump back to the chunk loop start so we connected those over the flow variable ports the problem form of the loop end is that it needs a data table input and therefore i created an empty table that's just a table in this regard with these three thousand rows and no data whatever and that is needed to execute the loop one thing I'd also like to mention here, and that's quite important, is you don't want to go in here and write new finance every single time. So you want to have them created dynamically. So what I basically did is I took, if you look at the chunk loop start, the chunk loop always creates a um, flow variable of type integer that holds the current iteration. So in this regard, the 10th iteration as they start counting with zero is current iteration is number nine. That's the last one. And then I take it in a string manipulation variable node and connect it with a kind of file name. So I say join iteration dash and then the number and then dot table. As it is a number, we first have to make it a string because this is the string manipulation node. So I used the function string here. I append a variable, a new one, call it var file name. And this is at the end then a string flow variable, as you can see here. Um, and then we just have to turn it into a path. And as we want to write it locally to the workflow, I choose bar file name here. And the file system, I choose relative to current workflow data area. Of course, you could also say local file, then you would have to adjust the string manipulation, wherever you want to save it. To make it shareable here over the Nime Hub, I wrote it to the current workflow data area, and that at the end basically gives me this flow variable, var file name underscore location. So I see it's relative, it's relative to the nine workflow data area, and it has the name iteration nine or eight or seven or six. It iterates basically through. This is what I write, and this is, let me just quickly show you what I then. I'm sorry, I just have to open the Windows Explorer here. So copy location, local path. Um, let me just show you here in the data area. We have our starting table and we have the 10 resulting tables. Once again, if you want to save it somewhere else and you want to save it as an XLSS file or something, um, you just need to change that. I will share this workflow also on the Nime Hub and give you the link um, to that comment. So I hope that helps. Well, that's it. And thank you for your question, Rashid. I really appreciate it. Seeing you then next time. Bye-bye.